Welcome to another Minecraft tutorial. It's been such a long time since I last uploaded. Why has that been? Here's the short version. So, where have I been? College. Why haven't I been uploading? College and work. And why am I starting to upload again? College! <laughs> because the next semester is only going to contain two courses and therefore I will have a little bit more time than usual and I'm hoping that I will have more well, more time to upload a few videos within that segment of the next two or three months. So, what are we going to do in this video? Well, haha, you read it in the title. We are going to build hoardings. What are hoardings exactly? Well, that is a good question. Let's take a look over here. These are hoardings on your right-hand side. So, as you can see, it has something to do with a wooden construction on top of a wall. But, what exactly are hoardings? Let's find out. Here to answer this question is a legend, a special guest for this episode. The one, the only, Professor Jamsy Boy. Hi Madness. During times of war, town and city defenders would bolster their defences. A really cheap and effective way of doing this was to build wooden overhangs at the top of walls so the defenders could shoot attackers at the base of the wall. And that sounds pretty darn useful. So let's build ourselves some hoardings. So as you can see I prepared a wall section over here. Obviously this will will fit a wall design that I'm using here. You might have to adjust the design a little bit for your needs. So what you want to do is to take logs. In this case I used um, the dark oak wood and I'm going to create an overhang of three blocks here using a side beam. Take note that this is, you start on the level that you want the walkway to be later on. So this is going to be the walkway, the row, uh, row right here. So I'm going to place this here and as you can see I can simply remove this block and place another three blocks here uh, and the wall design fits for this. In the middle here are five blocks so if you have to use it for your own wall design then leave five blocks free and create the next segment here and do the same thing again. You can repeat this as many times as you like. As you can see here, I'm gonna briefly explain it to you. Here this supported part with the angle at the bottom, um, these are the supported crossbeams that we just placed. and going out from here this is the middle of the wall segment this is one segment so three blocks to the left and three blocks to the right I'm gonna mark it right here this is one segment and then you can add another segment to to the sides and another and so on and so forth so you can I would advise not to place too many of these segments because the hoardings were mostly built at certain points which were valuable to defend. However, so what are we going to do? We are going to continue by placing four logs on top of these overhanging parts here. As always, we are going to start um, with the frames for the whole thing. So four blocks high, then we are going to make a cross beam starting one block higher than the overhanging logs were and I'm going to continue it up until this point and as you can see over here I'm going to place a row of logs again here but this time only three blocks high doing the same thing on the other side so two blocks here and then three blocks like this and then in the middle of these segments I'm also going to place two more logs just like this. We're going to repeat the same thing on the other side. Just as a quick info, we are only going to use walls on the outer side of the, um, of the hoardings. On the interior we are going to also build the construction but it's gonna look a little bit different because the use of the hoardings of course are mostly well concentrated to the outside so just imagine that these are this is the the outside of the castle or of the town that is being defended this is the inside of the castle or town so we are going to continue building it here and on the inside you want to take note that these are only two blocks I'm not gonna place the three blocks over here so just continue building the logs all the way across and I'm failing terribly here there we go 
And I'm also, on the inside, I'm not gonna place those two logs here. So just leave it like this. For the roof construction, I wanna simply build a cross beam over here. And over here. And over here. And then, to make this whole construction rest on the um, on the crenellations here, I'm gonna place logs and that totally depends now on your wall design. I'm going to take away these logs, uh, th these stone brick blocks here. Um, generally, you would build the the frames on top of the crenellations, but simply because this block looks kind of weird right now, I'm just gonna replace it here. So, if you if you feel like it, then simply have it rest on top of the crenellations and not be connected to the foot of the wall here. There we go. And these are pretty much the frames. We are going to add a little bit of decoration, as you can see here, a little bit later on. But now, let's move on to building the walls and the floor. And for that, well, this, this is now, of course, um, uh, the, the, the question now, of course, is how we properly do it. And Professor, can you ask? Uh, and Professor, can you answer us this question? How do we properly use the defensive capabilities of the wall? Well, when you have an overhang, it means that the defenders can throw stones and boiling liquids through gaps in the floor and shoot through the arrow slits. In movies, the defenders often have hot tar to pour down on attackers, but realistically, water and sand is much easier to come by and just as effective. Well, okay, so we need trapdoors on the floor and arrow slits in the walls. Alright, we can do that. So, first of all, you want to take spruce wood slabs, and I'm going to have to remove these blocks here, and always to the left and the right of the first overhanging block, I'm going to place a slab, a top slab as you can see, and then one block in diagonal, one block like this. Then I'm going to leave one block free again, and place it like this, in case of... and probably most most likely you will have another wall construction here so if there weren't any blocks here then I would place a full row in the back and only those two blocks in the front in this case I'm going to replace it again because that's just my wall design but in case you have it differently then you have to adjust it a little bit and one block here as well and then I'm going to the inside I will have to get rid of these two blocks here and I'm going to place another slab on top here. You could use it like this, but from the height that you have when you're standing up here, it makes more sense if you st are standing one half block higher. So I'm going to place a few slabs here. And then I'm going to take um, trap doors. And if you are standing, let me just quickly get rid of this to prevent me from jumping. Um, this here is the supporting overhanging log that we placed as, as the very first thing. So what you want to do whenever you are facing this, place a tra uh, trap door at the top of the log here so that it opens and it connects to this very log. So from this side I'm going to place it to the other side. and. On this log I'm doing it like, like this, and on this log I'm doing it just the same way. There we go. On these middle parts I'm going to try and face the wall so that they connect to the wall and open this way. So these two blocks are going to be placed like this. Wonderful. So now we have the, um, the holes in the floor to be able to throw stones and to shoot arrows down at the base of the wall. Now, for the arrow slits, first of all I want to fill in the basic wall material. I'm going to use spruce wood logs and I'm going to place one row at the bottom here. And then you want to take oak wood uh, stairs and place them upside down. and Always upside down like this so that you have this half a block missing here and therefore we are creating wonderful arrow slits to shoot through there we go 
And on the other side now, what you want to do, of course, is also to fill in the floor. But in this case, I'm not gonna put any... Um, I'm, I'm not gonna add any... Um, uh, I'm missing the word here. I'm not gonna have any um, things to throw holes, holes in the floor. Damn it. Why can't I talk anymore. Okay, so on this side I'm not gonna have any holes to throw uh, stones through, so I'm just gonna place the logs like this all the way across here. And this is basically the, lo the logistical part of the hoarding. So back here you can run while being protected and get more stones and uh, for example get more hot sand to pour down and stuff like that. Wonderful. And for the walls, I'm not going to build any walls, as it's as easy as that. I'm gonna take fences, in this case uh, dark spruce wood fences, place one row across here. And in the middle, where we have the other log row up here, I'm gonna place one more fence, simply to break up the pattern a little bit to make it look a little bit more interesting. Now let's move on to the roof. The roof is very easy, so I wanna take planks and place them all the way until you are reaching this pillar and then all the way across once. There we go. Do the same thing on the other side, across here, but on the inside as you can tell once again I'm only going to have it go exactly until I meet the tower here, so only two blocks. Then continue to build the uh, the, the roof here, and then I'm gonna take spruce wood slabs and place a row in front of it. There we go. Do the same thing to the outside. Uh, like this. Then I'm gonna have one overhanging block here. I'm gonna take a spruce wood stair, place it upside down, so that in the end if you have two, um, two hoarding elements connecting. You have one block in the middle, three here. Do the same thing on the other side, like this. Then it's a row of slabs across here. Like this. Do the same thing on this side. Stop failing here. As you can tell, I've not been building for a long time. <laughs> okay, and now take another, um, make another row of, uh, of planks. And what you also want to do is to always, when you um, when there's a connection to this crossbeam here, you want to place two regular logs there and then fill in the rest of it like this with planks as I said there we go now you want to take um, you want to take um, logs again and make a cross beam all the way to the other side and then a slab row at the end there we go So that's pretty much almost it. What you also want to do is to take spruce wood stairs and make this kind of construction here to simply to support the structure a little bit by placing oops, no. By placing two stairs like this and then going inside and placing a regular stair like this. So there we go. So that it looks like this. Do the same thing here. And yeah. go. And the last thing you want to do now is to add decoration. And by decoration I of course mean randomization. Yay! And before you say anything, I know that not everybody of my viewers uh, likes ran the randomization that I d do on most of my buildings. Please consider this. On this building, randomization makes so much sense. 
So I'm just gonna take birch wood planks and stairs and randomize this wall a little bit, just a little tiny bit. The reason why this makes sense is that hoardings are a temporary construction that's made that, that, that's made in war times. So there are projectiles being shot at this at the hoardings at all times of the siege. So in the end, you will have to repair the the walls. You have to make repairs to the roof, for example, which is uh, why there are also going to be randomizations of the roof here, simply to patch things up. And therefore, it makes sense that some wood, for example, in this case, is has been in the in the hoardings for long longer times than other parts of the wood. So therefore, for example, you could say that the birch wood is newer wood, and the rest is simply a little bit corroded and a little bit rotten, or already rotten from uh, the well from the elements and from well basically uh, from rain, and. Therefore, it, it kind of makes sense to, to add this. Also, I want to add a few buttons in front here. Also, to kind of uh, have um, some, yeah, repairs showing. And then I want to take signs and place signs on all the wooden parts. This, of course, this can take a while, depending on how large your wall is. But I think that this makes the reinforced look a lot more authentic and there we almost go wonderful it adds a little bit more of a of well a dimension to it you can you can clearly see that these are not regular blocks but that there is something in front of it and what you can also do is to randomize this a little bit so that you for example take one here and one there, but I'm gonna leave one away here, so that it's not that that is not always the same pattern. As you can see, this looks a little bit better now. And as a last decoration step, I'm gonna take uh, cobblestone walls and place them on these showing logs. The reason why I'm doing this 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 is you, you can totally optionally do this. Uh, I'm doing it because it fits with the rest of the buildings in my city. It doesn't make too much sense necessarily to have something like this uh, sticking out here. But um, in my case, this is just a purely aesthetic thing. And now for the same reason why I added um, the, the signs and uh, the randomization here, I'm gonna take uh, pressure plates and place them on a few blocks here um, to show that the, roo the roof needed fixing at some point because maybe a projectile from a catapult impacted on the roof therefore a few repairs were needed not too many but a few i think i'm gonna leave it like this wonderful wonderful now keep in mind this is obviously as i said um a design for a very narrow wall as you can see this is a one block wide wall in many cases i know you guys uh, you will have bigger walls broader walls so what should we do when we have wider walls? Is it, is it a problem to make the hoardings bigger? Professor, what's your opinion? Nah, make them bigger and don't worry about being historically accurate because some examples were found that were two stories tall. That's good to know because for example in my city wall, my city wall is five blocks wide so of course I'm gonna prefer a hoarding design which is a little bit more uh, broader and bigger so that well it fits with the general d dimensions of the wall wonderful well and as you can see we are already done so let me just <laughs> let me just quickly say I, I don't know what to say uh, let me just quickly say that it's been fun doing a Minecraft video again. I will try to make more Minecraft videos and more content in the upcoming two or three months, depending on how long um, I will, uh, how much time I will have um, in between courses. But it's been, it's been fun doing this again. And uh, thank you, Professor. Thank you so much for joining us today. No problem. Thanks for the script.
And with that, there is pretty much nothing left to say for me, but I've been Madness64, and as always, please rate, comment, subscribe, do, do as you will, and hopefully we'll see you next time. Bye-bye. Well, it's not been too bad for the first time saying my outro for, like, ages. I can improve. The next video will improve. Once again, thanks a bunch to Jumsy Boy for coming back from the dead just like me to um, to provide his voice as the professor in this video. Thank you so much. See you. Bye bye.